All right. Hey, hey. Welcome, Eric. Uh, thank you so much, Eric. I'm gonna I'm gonna call you out here in a in a minute <laughs> um, to thank you. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you for doing that today as well. I've got redundancy set up today, but you never know. Could could come in handy again. So I appreciate that, man. Um, so yes, Mac D asked. Uh, is yesterday's replay available? And yes, uh, my recording got munched somehow in the go-to webinar system, uh, which people have told me happened more than you would think. <laughs> so what I'm doing today is I'm using ScreenFlow to um, to record our our webinar today, and then Eric is recording it today as well. And Eric recorded it yesterday, um, and just happened I posted in the group said, "Hey, did anybody?" You know, record this, and he came through. He sent me two different files. The second one worked, and now um, if you go to the bonuses, I uploaded a new module. This is four four part live training replays, and Eric was able to capture 52 minutes of that call, which I think was just over an hour. Um, and I think he missed the first handful of minutes where I was just, you know, going through housekeeping stuff. So it, almost all of it is what he caught there at, until the end. So. Um, we're good to go there. So everybody should give him a huge round of applause and a, th a quick thank you in the in the group when you have time, um, because I thought yesterday's session was pretty good. I got a lot of feedback about people want to go back and study it. So, um, so we've got it recording today to preemptively uh, avoid that situation in the future, and I've got redundancy set up. But um, honestly, uh, Eric saved my butt yesterday. <laughs> so thank you, buddy. <laughs> um, Okay, cool. So, listen, guys. There's um, there's uh, a handful of you who are joining. Hey, Angie, welcome. Angie had our one-on-one -on -one call today. So, I'm just gonna um, run through a couple of quick housekeeping things while people are still sort of rolling in, and then we're gonna get started because there's a lot to cover today. And I know a lot of you have the business manager questions um, and additional questions as well. So, what I'm gonna cover today is about 30 minutes of business manager. Uh, walk through, and then I'm also going to um, take Q and A for about 30 minutes at the end again. So we'll try to keep the same sort of um, structure and format that we did yesterday. And then um, tomorrow, my plan for tomorrow and Friday is basically to um, tackle what I think is is you know next in in uh, priority, which is you know prospecting and sales. That seems to be the thing that most people are asking about. And then, in addition to that, um, you know, we can talk about anything else that you guys want. So let me know if you have a preference. But in addition to that, I also wanted to talk about positioning a lot because a lot of you are trying to sell this the same way that you sold previous stuff. And it's, it, you know, in your agency, when you're selling anything, how much money you make is dependent on how you position yourself and the service that you offer. And there's a big difference between selling a tactic and actually positioning yourself as an advisor and as a growth advisor is what I'm positioning myself as positioning yourself as a growth advisor who's sort of indispensable who, who becomes indispensable to the business owner okay so if you guys have other things that are way more pressing we can certainly move it to that those things um, let me know uh, today and let me know um, you know in the, ch in the chat in a group as well if you're not seeing this live but we will We'll do our best to cover as much important stuff that you know, as many things or as deep in one thing that allows you to become successful as fast as humanly possible with this stuff. So that's my goal with it. Um, so so let's uh, let's dig right in real quick. Um, Shane Hall says I got my extra ad accounts approved today. I had an FB rep helping me, and they did a good job of staying on top of it. It took four days total. Awesome. So Shane, can you share with us today, and I'll read it off, what you what you wrote in, how you got in touch with the ad rep, and what that back and forth communication looks like? Because I did mine almost two years ago, and it was a lot easier to get it approved then. So if you could share with us what that looked like, that would be incredible. Uh, just got called. Hey, no problem, Eric. Um, no problem. That You can catch the, the replay later, Eric. No worries there. So, replay will be up later today, hopefully, if all goes well on the technical side. Um, so, again, guys, to find the replay from yesterday, um, oops, 
we have, it, you just go log into the member section, click on bonuses, and all the way at the bottom, uh, this is the day one training. So I'll just stack them all up here. So today's replay will go beneath this one, and the uh, tomorrow's replay will go below that one, and on down the line. Cool? Okay, guys, so let's get started. Uh, any questions before I get going? Joel, what's happening? 6.30 a.m. here, so Joel must be, where are you again, Joel? I forget. If it's 6.30 a.m., you must be in, gosh, where the heck are you? Ah, Australia, Oz, love it. So you're hustling, man. You're having your coffee. You're up, up with it. The early bird gets the worm, right, Joel? <laughs> uh, welcome, brother. Um, okay, guys, so here's the deal. I'm going to wait for, um, what's up, Joel, in Michigan? So we're going to wait for uh, Shane to respond. Shane, if you can respond and let us know what kind of how that whole thing went down, I'm just going to get started and answer some basic questions about Business Manager. Um, but please type that out. I'm going to share it with everybody if you don't mind because that's a hot topic right now. So here's the deal, guys. Um, what I want to do is show you, I created a new business manager in here. So I'm just going to go, Page Ladder is the one that has all my clients in it. But I just created this one called Rob Consulting so that I could um, play around in here with you guys and show you how to, um, how to do this stuff. And um, so mine looks empty. Yours will not likely look this empty, okay? Um, and basically, I think it's important to know that... Um, uh, the business manager is confusing and imperfect, okay? And I'm telling you guys that because a lot of you have said, am I doing it wrong? Um, you know, it's so frustrating. And guys, I wish I had better, more clear answers for you. But um, this is Facebook's baby, and they just rolled it the F out. You know, they just said, we're going to do this. And um, it kind of is what it is. They have made improvements since I signed up for it. So that's encouraging. Um, and hopefully, um, you know, as time progresses, they're going to get better and better at making this super easy and super straightforward um, because this is their baby. The ads are, are what pays the bills for Facebook, right? <laughs> so it's in their best interest to do that. Um, having said all that, uh, I really, really want to um, encourage you guys to, um, to stick with it because it's worth the figuring it out, right? It's so, so powerful once you get everything set up and you're established in there, it's so powerful once you can get through this to set up a long-term relationship with your client, to have everything set up right. Because the last thing that you want is to have your ad account slapped or or suspended or whatever, which Facebook can do, and they, they do that often, and they don't need to give you a reason why they did it either. So it protects your ad accounts, it protects your client's ad accounts. I'm gonna give you guys some um, some tips on what I found to help with things in Business Manager, and I'm going to try to overlap that with the things that I've gotten asked about the most, okay, including yesterday. So so here we go, okay. So now that you've got your Business Manager set up, and that's step one, just go to business.facebook.com if you haven't done this already. Um, uh, what you want to do, okay, is actually um, claim your assets. So if, if you don't have your own page claimed or your own ad account claimed, go ahead and do that first. And here's a couple reasons why. Number one, it's good practice to do it. Number two, you should have your own assets in Business Manager anyway. And number three, um, when you when you go through the steps, you're going to understand um, what like what the mechanics of of the the roles are <clears throat> of each of each area in, in here. Okay, and I know that's probably confusing, so let me give you a really quick example. So if you go to All Tools and just go to Business Manager. Um, maybe I need to claim a page. Um, maybe I have to claim one. Let's see if, if I can do that. Um, okay, this is a better a better view. So when you're in the business manager, there's two things, right? There's number one, the client is seeing their own version of this. So you've got your business manager, and this is your version. So this is mine as an agency. The client has their own version of the, this. It's exactly the same. They're looking at the exact same thing on their end, but it's their account with their claimed business page, their claimed ad account if they have one, okay? So you don't want the clients, uh, someone asked me, oh, do I have the clients log into my business manager? No, you do not do that. 
you want to connect um, the two, not connect's probably a bad word, let me use a different word. When they have signed up for their own business manager and claim their assets, and you've got your own business manager, you want to request access to their ad account. And they can grant you access, they can give you permission-based access from their ads manager, uh, or their business manager account, and they can grant that to you and take it away at some date in the future without giving you ownership rights to that ad account or business page, okay? Really, really important to understand. So, why is that important? Well, <clears throat> Facebook wants for the businesses that have these assets to keep them in their possession. So, they don't want the business owner giving you a shared email address or having you log in as them to, to admin the page or anything like that. They want to stop doing that. So, essentially what they want to do is have the business owner claim all their assets and then just grant permission-based access to whoever, whatever third party is helping them with this stuff, okay? So is everybody following along with that basic principle so far? Can you guys just type yes or one if that makes sense at this stage? Because that's really important to understand. Hey, what's up, Ed? Uh, no problem, man. You're good. If you're late, no worries. Um, we're going to have a replay. We're, we're pretty sure we're going to have a replay today. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, so Harry, Harry uh, Fleischauer, is that how, how uh, am I pronouncing it right, Harry? Just like AdWords, just like AdWords MCC. It's the same thing, okay, if you guys are familiar with that. Okay, good. So here's the deal. Um, what, what you need to do is understand that, that there's, and Roger Weaver has a good question. Is there a hierarchical, hierarchical structure to business manager ads accounts and ads. Um, there is, but it's it's more important to understand the roles than it is the hierarchical structure, okay? So let me show you what I mean. Over here on the left, you've got people, and these are, are people within your organization. So I've got me, right? But I need to add Betsy, let's just say, because she's on my team. So I do Betsy at pageladder.com, okay? And I would want to make her an admin in my business manager because she's running campaigns for me, okay? So I would say add people. So if you have people at your agency that you want to help with this stuff, you need to add another person to your business manager, okay? Likewise, if the business owner has an employee that they want to have help with, the, with their page admin, let's just say, this is where they would do that as well, okay? So again, there's two places. You're doing it they're doing it for their business and you're doing it for, for, our, for your agency so far. Okay, that's, that's the stage that we're at right now. Um, and if there was a page here that we had claimed, I don't want to do it because it'll take it out of my other business manager, but if there was a page that we had claimed, it would show up here and I could give her permission to do that. Okay, so you would just follow this wizard and say, yeah, I want her to have access to this client or to this, this to Page Ladder's page, but not Rob Bailey's page, right? Because those are my assets. Um, and, you know, I'm just making that up as I go, but if for some reason I didn't want Betsy to have access to all those pages, you could just pick which ones you wanted her to have and leave out the ones you don't here, okay? Um, same thing, right here, the wizard's going to ask you to sign ad accounts to Betsy. So which ones can she work on, right? So if I had any ad accounts in here, um, you could say I want Betsy to have access to all of them or just certain ones or none, right? And then... Um, Product catalogs, none of us have those. I don't think that's irrelevant, so you could just skip that step. That's a feature that I don't even use. And then it says, you've given one person access to Rob Consulting at an admin level, okay? You've assigned them to X pages, X ad accounts, and X business assets. Close. Okay, cool. So now, now we've got our team, our internal team, okay? And I'm just gonna keep this analogy going. My internal team, my, my team and my employees have access to our, our assets, our pages, our ad accounts. The business owner is gonna do the same. If they have like, you know, a, a, an employee that manages their social media profiles, they would have like that employee here and then the business owner here, okay? So, so far, they've got theirs, they've added their employees, we've got ours, we've added our employees. Making sense so far, guys? Just type in a one or a yes. I just wanna make sure, because this is, it's moving a little slow, but it's going to move fast here in a minute. And if we don't understand this stuff, it's going to get messy, <laughs> freaking messy. Okay, Mike Holmes, everyone says yes, but Mike Holmes says, I think so. Okay, so Mike, if you need clarification, let's address that real quick. Kevin, there's no other chat room. I'm just reading reading the questions. 
Call it a yes. Okay, good. 10-4. Good. Okay, guys. So, Steve Oaks, what's up? No worries. You're not late because we're recording this. You can go back and catch up, but welcome. Okay. Um, Mac D says, what do you say to the biz owner for them to know it's in their best interest? I'll go over that. That's really important. Okay. Um, so I'll get to that, Mac. I'm going to keep your question open. All right. We'll answer it here in a minute. Um, okay, good. So now we have people in here. So now these people can access, and what this does is uh, the Facebook business manager just sent my employee, my, my team member, um, an email inviting her to log into her own, to log into uh, Page Ladder's business manager, so our agency's business manager. So when she logs in, she'll get access to all the things that I just granted her access to. So she would go to business.facebook.com, log in with her own username and password, and then she would have access to work on all this stuff. Okay, cool. So that's that. Now over here on the left, when you click on pages, these are all the pages that we have claimed in our in our agency's business manager. All of the assets that we um, that we have access to. Okay. Now here's where I'm going to answer a ton of questions for you guys. Okay. So <clears throat> this is the difference between claiming a page and requesting access to a page. Okay. Um, claiming a page means you're claiming your own page. Okay. Again. Facebook does not want for you to claim a different business owner's page because it doesn't belong to you, okay? Unless you own that page, do not click this button. So if you do, like I could claim Page Ladder's page, let's just, you know, the only page that I want to claim is Page Ladder's, right? The only page that I want to claim is Rob Bailey's, right? This one. Because I own them. It's my agency, I own them, I want to have them in here, right? So do not, I would not go to my client's page and try to claim it because that's me asking to have it, like own it. Okay, so don't do that <laughs> with your clients' pages. What you want to do is request access to their page, okay? So, um, oh, and this is a good note. It says a primary page is required. Your business needs a primary page to request pages, ads, accounts, and other assets from another business or person uh, that will verify your business through your primary page. So if you don't have a business page for your agency, go set one up real quick, and it could just be your name, like, you know, my business page is um, facebook.com slash like Rob. Whoops. Okay. So this is my business page. This is the page that people can like, right? This is uh, my public business page. People can look me up and see me from wherever, right? I don't need to be friends with them for them to see all this stuff. So... You guys need to have at least one business page set up for your business, okay? For It can be your name as a business page, or it can be your agency's name as a business page. It, it doesn't really matter, but the client is going to grant access to whatever um, this is tied to, right? So they should know that it's you. So people know that I own PageLadder. That's my agency. So that would work, right? I just tell them that, oh, yeah, PageLadder is my agency. That's who you're going to get a request from is page ladder would, is requesting access to your page. That's what that message would say over here, right? So go get a primary page if you don't already have it. If you've already got a business page set up, go and claim it and you're not going to see this message, right? So um, you can either create one or claim an existing one that you have for this purpose. So after you've, you've done that, um, your your pages your page is going to show up in here and eventually your clients pages will show up in here too but those are the two actions that you need to have right are claiming your own page and then once you've done that you're going to request access from there on out you're only going to request access to your clients pages okay so um and I'm going to show you how to do that here in a minute. But this is a big differentiation. So do we all understand the difference between claiming and requesting access to someone, another business owner's page so far? Um, <laughs> Kevin McCarty, you cracked me up, dude. Well done. Um, <clears throat> so for so this is a good question. Shane Hall says, so, oh, this is Shane telling us how he got it done. Um he said, well, okay, I'll let you finish that thought there, Shane, before I share it, okay? Um, so MACD has a good question. Should we claim both our personal and FB biz page 
or just our biz page. Well, uh, Mac, you're not going to be able to claim your personal page. So the difference is this is my um, my personal profile. You're not going to claim your personal profile. There's nothing to do from a business point from your personal profile. This is just you, right? Your personal page. This is my personal page. My business page can be liked, right? Like you have to friend me on my personal page. There's no business features on this page. This is just me, all my personal stuff. Your When you create a business page for your Self. It can be you or your company name or both. I have one for each, but this is the page that has all the business functionality attached to it. So the only one that you can claim through the business manager is your business page. Does that make sense? Cool. Okay, guys. Roger that, says Steve. Ed says yes. Okay, good. Um, okay, good. So here's the deal, guys. So, so far, what we want to do is just just um, get there, okay? Now, here's the deal. Before I move away from pages and go to ad accounts, there's there's only two things that you need to really care about in here, and it's getting admin access to your client's pages, and it's getting, um, sometimes, getting access to their existing ad accounts, okay? And I'm going to explain um, the, the two possible scenarios with the ad accounts here in a minute, but for now, what you always, always, always need to do if you're going to run the ads from your client's um, brand, then you have to get admin access through the business manager to their page, their business page, okay? So when we run an ad for Point Loma Sports Club, and the reason why, this is why you have to do that, okay? And that's always. So with pages, you always have to have admin access to run ads on their behalf and have it showing coming from Point Loma Sports Club. That's what ties their business page to the ad. So instead of saying Rob Bailey right here or Page Ladder, it says Point Loma Sports Club, and if somebody clicks on that, it goes directly to that business's business page. Okay, so that's why that step is important. Everybody following so far? <clears throat> so every single time you want to work with a client, you got to do that. You got to request access to their admin page, and I'm show you how in a minute. But conceptually, I want you guys to understand this before we move on. Good stuff, Garrick. Garrick says yes. All right. So we got to do that. So that one's pretty straightforward. Always, always, always have to do that. Um, can't run the ads from their, you know, showing their page as connected to their page if we don't do that step. Cool. So that's that. Now let's move on to ad accounts. Okay. Same thing with ad accounts as with pages. Claiming an ad account means you're claiming an ad account that belongs to somebody else. So unless it's your ad account that you run ads from and your ads manager or your, you know, they, they give you two of them connected to your personal account. So go ahead and claim those from your personal account. Like if I fired up an ad for my personal Facebook page, um, it would do it through ads manager and you get two ad accounts in there. So claim your own, right, the ones that you have run ads for personally, but do not try to claim a client's ad account. That's not the proper way to do it, okay? Now, here's the two scenarios with this one right here, to request an ad account, right? Um, let me see if I have a little pencil thing, pointer, ah, spotlight. Does that work? Spotlight, no, spotlight's not working. What am I doing wrong? No, I don't, that thing doesn't work, that's okay. I, um, this one right here, under ad accounts, request access to an ad account. I'm going to slow it down for a minute, okay? So there's two scenarios here. If the client has an ad account that they've used previously, um, you might be saying to yourself, well, it's beneficial to use that ad account because it's already existing, and I just want to run the ads from their ad account, okay? There's two things that go along with that. Number one is... The, if the client owns that ad account, they're always going to have access to it, okay? So um, so it's okay to do that if you're okay with them keeping all the stuff that comes with it, right? All the ad history, all the testing and targeting history, um, the pixel data, okay? The pixel data is tied to the ad account. So um, if they come into the relationship with you and they've already, they're already running ads, there might be value in that previous data, okay? There might be value in them, like they have the pixel installed, maybe, but they don't—they're not using it, right? 
But here's the trade-off there. If they decide to stop working with you one day, they get to keep all that stuff, okay? And, um, and, and that's, that's fine in some scenarios, but if you're doing a free trial for somebody, for example, it's not very fair if they want to go just take the account back and steal your work, basically, and not pay you for it, okay? So when, when we claim, or not when we claim, when we request access to a client's existing ad account, we have an exceptional relationship with them because we feel like they're going to st stick in this with us and they're going to be true partners and it's going to be a long-term relationship and they're going to pay their bill you know, with us and not be dicks about it. And we're happy to give them their data back you know, and, and their ad account back at the end of the relationship if, if that's the case. But if you're starting off brand new in a relationship with a client and you're earning their trust by doing a free trial, you're putting a lot on the line. You're taking all the risk, okay? So I, what I like doing instead is creating a fresh ad account from my business manager. So instead of requesting access to an ad account, if I'm doing a free trial for client, I create a new ad account, okay? And uh, I create a new ad account and I name it the client's name, so test client one. And um, by the way, on this part right here, advertising on behalf of, you always just choose your own business. It's not asking you which page you want to run the ad from, so that's a little detail, that, but write that down. <laughs> if, you, if you've got a ton of ad accounts in here, it'll give you a list of all the businesses that you're trying to help. Just choose your own business on this, on this step. Okay, so I'm gonna create the ad account. And now this is creating an ad account that I own and control that the client does not have access to, okay? So I'm gonna add both people, that, you know, this is my team, so I own and control this ad account. And I wanna make us both admins so that Betsy can work on it and help me with it too. Click Save Changes. You've just created a new ad account, Test Client 1. To use this ad account, you'll need to select the payment method, okay? So before I get into payment methods, is there ever, everybody with me so far? If, if I create a fresh ad account and run ads from this ad account, the client does not have access to it, okay? The only thing that I requested access from in this scenario is um, admin access to their business page, okay? And now what I own and control is the ad account that I'm running the test budget with, okay? And that's valuable because if they leave, then we get to keep all the data and the pixel stuff and all that, and we just turn it off, okay? And I, that might sound a little snarky and a little dickish, but guys, this is a great way to protect yourself, okay? If the client, I've had this happen several times. The client thinks this is so fucking easy, and then they see us do it fast, and, you know, they're a little bit shady, and they, you know, shine us on, and then all of a sudden, we wake up a couple weeks later, and they their true colors show, and that's when I get high mighty on them real quick, right? And I go, listen, man, I did a really good job of laying out how this, you know, I'm being nice by doing all this stuff up front. I'm a professional at doing this. I grow people's businesses. I never, the only thing that I ever asked you to do was to give this a try if you were a good fit. And we determined together that we were a good fit, didn't we? And they go, yeah. And so, so then I try, try to, you know, get them back. And if I can't, then, then you know, I, I'm, it's all on them. I'm like, look, dude, that's super shady. I built you this whole funnel, built you this whole ad campaign. And if you just want to take it and run and you think you could do a better job of it, go ahead, you know, have fun. And then they don't realize that we used our lead pages account. We used our ad account and they go and try to duplicate it and they do a terrible job and they don't get results and they quit. Okay. And some people are just like that. Okay. But I'm telling you guys at the beginning, especially if you're doing free trials, you want to do the free trials on the, on the ad account that you own and control, because if your ethics are above board, it'll never be an issue. Okay. So that, that's good. It's a good thing to do that. It's You're the professional anyway. They don't need to be digging around in here anyhow, okay? It's, it's like not in their best interest as a business owner to focus on tiny minutia of running an ads. They should be focusing on sales and growing their business, okay? that's Honestly, that's what's best for them. And my clients will tell you that. They'll be like, ever since we hired Rob, we haven't thought about Facebook ads. He just takes care of it for us, and we grow our business, right? So, so it does a couple things. It's, it keeps... It protects you from, you know, controlling the process and cr controlling the asset, and it also keeps their head out of there, okay? So a lot of clients are self-sabotagers, and they want to micromanage the crap out of everything. In this scenario where you own the ad account, they don't even have access to the ad account. So you're sending them reports telling them how it's going, 
and showing them the lead sheet, which is what they should be focused on, but they're not in there checking it every day. How many clicks are we getting? What's our cost per click? What, how many impressions? Like blah, 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 blah. It's unnecessary. It's a waste of time, okay? So do you guys see the difference there? That's a big one. This is What I just explained is a big one. I've had gotten this question more than anybody else, okay? So let's pause for a minute and I'll take a look. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, okay, Roger, I'm going to answer your question here shortly. Um, okay, Roger says, is that admin access to a page? What puts ad spend on their account? No. Uh, good question, Roger, but no. The ad account is what is the spending vehicle uh, to spend on their account. So there's two pieces, right? You need two pieces to run the ad. You need your business page and you need an ad account to attach to that business page, right? And you can mix and match them. I mean, you can have multiple ad accounts for one business page if you want. But generally, you just need one business page and one ad account, okay? Um, we'll talk about the ad spend part here in a minute. I'll get in the payment. Payments next, guys. So the payment stuff, I'm gonna clarify that too. But just, just make sure that you understand this concept. Can everybody give me a one or a yes? And ask questions now if, you, if we're not understanding this step. Frank Kona says, oh yeah, very, cl very clear. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ed McDonough says, cool stuff. Joe says, looks great. Steve says, you can give them access to the data after the test is complete, right? Yes, so Steve, just like we can request access or try to claim an ad account from someone else, the business owner, if you want to, you, the, the business owner could claim that ad account and you could give it to them, right? But no one asked for that. Like, none of my clients asked for that. It's not a big issue. Once, once you've shown them results, they don't really care, you know, who, who owns the account, at least not so far. <laughs> um, Tony Scott says, the mist is lifting. Yes, sir. Okay, that's what I'm after. We're going slow, guys, but this, I swear, you're going to understand this so well after this, and it's going to clear everything up. Okay, Greg Stillman says, um, when creating an ad account, select the time zone for whom? Yourself or the client time zone? Um, it can be either one, but if you're running the ads, keep it in your time zone, Greg. If you're running the ads for them, keep it in your time zone. It's The only reason why that matters is the reporting, and that's a tiny, tiny thing. Like, They're not going to ask you for data in a time zone, like it's not part of your reporting process to your client, so it's it's a, literally a non-issue. Um, Rabiha says, how do you prevent from getting upset at a time like this? Oh, with the jerk, the jerk scenario, Rabiha? Is that what you're talking about? Did you continue to work with someone who's a jerk like that? Nope. That's an easy one. I don't do it. Guys, once you start to um, have a certain amount of success and you're good at providing scarcity and positioning yourself, whoops, um, positioning yourself um, well, you don't have to work with jerks anymore, you know? So I, I honestly don't tolerate it anymore, you know? And that's a luxury that I have because I've, I've gotten good at this and I'm two years in and um, I worked really hard at doing that, but I'm, I know that story all too well because I used to, um, I used to be the guy who would happy to take people's money even though they condescended me and you know they just thought we were a bunch of young kids like you know pounding away on our laptops in some like startup space or whatever like but now like I've established myself as and and uh you know and I'm going to talk about this in positioning but I established myself as an an advisor who is indispensable that's probably the best way to say it right so if somebody doesn't view me as an, an advisor who's indispensable, then I tell them it's not a good fit, and I'm not afraid to part ways. But I've only had that happen a couple times, Rubiha, where I was like, wow, man, you're really being a dick. And I tell them that, and I just say, listen, man, I was so super cool with all this stuff. I was so upfront and on board with everything, removing all the risk from you. I took all the risk. So now to see you discount it like that, is, it bums me out, man. It makes me not want to work with you. Are we still a good fit for this? And then I just started asking them questions. Great, so when you see that this ad is getting new results and that we put all this time and testing and effort into it and you're just turning around trying to take take our work and you know, you're know you incorrectly assuming that you can do it just as good or better, 
do you see how that really makes me not want to work with you ever again and tell everybody else in town to go like do this for your next biggest competitor in town like I'm not being the dick you are you know so I, I will say this, this is rare I mean I've probably helped 300 business owners in my time and there's only been like one or two or three that have really tried to fuck me over like that <laughs> but it happens you know and especially if you're going in trying to prove your worth it helps to have that extra layer of confidence and be like look I'm taking all the risks so I'm gonna own the assets for now it's not that big of a deal I'm a good person I'm an ethical person I'm offering to prove result, results to you first I'm not like all those other people out there and what I'm trying to do is prove that to you so if you just give me the chance to do that and at each step of the way we still are thinking that we're a good fit for this for the reasons that I outlined you know in our prospecting and sales conversations then we can still keep working together if not that's fine but be a man about it and just be like Rob can you just show me how to do this so I can do it on my own right instead of shining us on and telling us that oh it's great yeah I'm just trying to get something for free out of you like that's not why we're doing the free thing right we're doing the free thing to show them that we're different with the expectation that we'll keep working together if we can show you results because I identified you as a good fit for this and once I showed you what we're doing and I asked you if you thought you were a good fit for this you said yes and we're, we're moving on right okay does that make sense Rubia so th this comes down a lot to you know setting proper expectations managing the client the right way positioning yourself selling it properly right their perception of you has a lot to do with this but um, yeah so that kinda covers that <laughs> yes and that's why you don't take clients who are unqualified who do not have the four criteria Rabiha because she said it probably depends on qualifying a lot and that's exactly what it is right and guys this is an important one I don't care what service you're offering you need to qualify your clients before coming in the door just because they have money to pay you doesn't mean that it's gonna work out okay in fact it can be the complete opposite it can be a total disaster it can ruin your reputation they can ask for a charge back they can ask for their money back because they don't understand stuff that's not your fault necessarily right but that's why you qualify clients is if you're willing to jump through four small hoops if you're willing to get me everything I need if you're willing to um, invest in selling the proper way because we're gonna bring you leads you gotta sell those leads for this to work right then it's a good fit but if you're gonna sit there and act like our leads are just gonna get off the couch and come in without you picking up the phone and talking to them you're high right you have to do your part this is business I'm sorry grow grow up grow a pair if, if you're if you wanna have the doors open in five years mr. business owner I promise you if you're if you're not doing this well the the, the, um, the leads and the sales thing well you're gonna be under because you're in the most competitive space there is consumer stuff right it's everywhere there's a gym every five feet in my neighborhood there's you know a restaurant every two feet right I mean guys you have to understand that they need so much help from you to walk this line and stay on it I mean I just can't explain to you how valuable your your advisory skills are to them to get them to listen and get out of the noise and just be like this is so powerful so leverageable you have to get good at this to just maintain or grow but if you're not maintaining or growing then what is the other option closing the doors one day right okay so I think we covered that, but that's that, that's the stage. This is why these little decisions matter, right? They add up. Okay, good. So Steve Oaks says integrity is key. It's a two-way street. Indeed, Steve Oaks. Um, okay, good. So Alan's got a good question. So it's better to keep all the data to protect ourselves in most, if not all, scenario, right? Yes. So Alan, um, I would do that as a first option always, and then if for some reason, you know, you're considering doing it otherwise, then there should be a good reason to do it otherwise okay so if they paid you up front or you've got a really strong relationship with them already for some reason you know then you can stray from that that's okay but do not do it if you're just getting started or like that would be the rule not the exception okay that's probably the best way to put that Chet says one of the best reasons for owning a business is that you you can fire a customer and client that's true guys it is a two-way street all the way if you're not if it's not working out well for you your client is not being served well okay I could talk about that for like weeks <laughs> I swear it's like it makes all the difference there's a book out there that you guys should go pick up it's called the um, when without pitching manifesto 
Go look this up. I'll put this link in the um, chat. Um, over the holiday, you guys should go read this. I think you can read, oh yeah, you can read it online. It might even be free. I think it might be free in a PDF online. Go check it out. This is a really short book, but it will, in a very short period of time, perfectly explain the nuances of what I just rattled off to you guys. Okay, so um, it's, it's a book that I read three times a year to keep my mindset correct in the principles that I just gave to you. Okay, so go check that out. Um, yeah, Tony Scott, I, I mentioned this to Tony Scott. He said he read it after his one-on-one -on -one call with me. It's excellent. Yeah, Tony, right? In fact, if you want to post a couple of thoughts that you have in the group, Tony, about that, that's I'll post the, the link to this in the group because everybody needs to read it. It makes all the difference. Um, okay, cool. I want to keep this moving, guys. So uh, let me go back and <clears> – <throat> so there's the payment methods. Now here's – let me, let me um, wrap this one little, like, um, step up so that we can complete this loop, and then I need to open up Shane's because Shane got the business manager access, okay? Um, the payment methods, guys, are tied to the ad account, okay? So think about that for a second. Payment method is tied to the ad account. So if you own the ad account and you're doing a trial, what does that mean we have to do? I'm curious to see if you guys know this, okay? So it's not a rhetorical question. I'll say it again. If you own the ad account, and you have to connect your payment method to that ad account, then what do you need the client to do to pay for the ad spend? Anybody? Yep. Angie says pay up front. Vita says pay me. Yep, get the CC info. Uh, no. So Greg, I wouldn't get their credit card info. They need to pay us the ad spend so that we can turn around and pay it with our credit card on our ad account, okay? Yep, Jermaine says pay you up front, so pay $200 in ad spend to us. Great, client, we're doing the free trial for you. All we need is $200 in ad spend. 100% of that goes directly to Facebook ads, right? So that's why the payment processing part and the training is so important, right? You need a quick way to collect that. So go over here to um, onboarding, and then, eh, 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 no, where is it? Oh, sales, sorry. Sales, and the last module in sales is how to collect payment the easy way. You need a quick link that you can shoot off to them, or you need a um, you need to collect their credit card info to collect payment from them on your system. So I, I would, you know, use one of these three tools like PayPal or um, PayFunnels, right? Um, PayFunnels is great because you can just say, okay, great, pay us the two hundred bucks, and then you say, what's your credit card number, right? and you just take it over the phone right then and there. And as they're rattling off their credit card information to you, you punch it into PayFunnels and you click um, click pay this invoice and it'll instantly pay you and they're gonna get like an email confirmation right away. So you say, great, that process, you have an email receipt in your inbox saying that it's 200 bucks strictly for ad spend and we're gonna show you that we're gonna spend all $200 of that ad spend during your trial by the end, okay? Awesome, yep. Um, or PayPal you up front. Yep. Okay. Got it, Rabiha. Yeah. Everybody's getting it. Yeah. Um, pay in advance. Do you ever? F okay. Good. Have you ever done the free trial with the ad spend on new on you? I have Rabiha, but I do not recommend it. The client needs to have some skin in the game, and 200 bucks is nothing. If they have kick pushback about that, they're not viewing this as an investment, and they're not viewing you as being valuable yet and two hundred dollars is nothing to a business that does six figures seven figures a year so they should be happy to have you doing this service for free to get a bunch of leads for that two hundred bucks okay um, I have done it before but to get a case study for a real estate agent in front of mine and it just did not work out well I wouldn't recommend doing it to you guys okay I have done it but I don't recommend doing it that's the short answer <laughs> um, okay good so so, okay, Jermaine has a good question. PayPal deducts a fee from the money's paid. You, yeah, just add 3% to your ad spend. So for 200 bucks, that's $6. So I would charge them $206. Okay, because that covers my little credit card processing fee. I've never got an objection about it. It's just fast and easy. Six bucks is worth the convenience. Okay, good. Good, good. So... <clears throat> 
So payment method, after you create the fresh ad account for the client, then you attach your payment method because you're gonna collect the ad spend from them and then turn around and put it on your payment method straight to Facebook. Now, the other scenario where they, ha they own the ad account, if they give you agency access to their ad account, their credit card will be tied to that ad account. Their payment method will be tied to that ad account. And we have some clients we do this for, right? The ones that we have a good relationship with, they own the ad account and they just give us access to it, right? We request access, they grant it, but they are paying the ad spend. We are just managing how much we spend for them, okay? So when they give you access to the, to the ad account, you can't go put your credit card information on their ad account. They need to do that but you can spend their money because <laughs> they gave you admin access to their ad account. So when you go to fire up the campaign, the credit card, the payment method that's attached to that ad account will just get charged. So you just go create the ad, set the daily budget, click go, gets approved, starts running, and the client gets billed directly for that, okay? So that's how that works. So is everybody clear on payment methods so far? So we covered pages, ad accounts, payment methods. Just give me one or a yes. And is, is the light turning on now, guys, at this point? Okay, good, good, good. Um, okay, someone says no sound. Alan C says no sound. Alan, you just need to log out. Log out, log back in, okay? Um, Joe says, how do they pay after the trial? Joe, I have a whole module on that in here. Um, oops, sorry. How to collect payments the easy way. Um, if you're asking how we charge them, we always charge up front and they pay for the fee. So if, if we, again, if we own the ad account, we charge them for the ad spend plus our fee. So if we recommend $500 for one month in ad spend plus our $1,000 fee, we collect $1,500 from them. Make sense? Cool. All right, thanks, Sam, for the sound. Sound okay. Cool. All right, all right, all right, good. Everybody's nodding their head? Okay, good. So if everybody's clear up to this point, those are the basics, guys. That's the, just understanding that will make the rest of this shit easier. Now, now that, you understand, now that you understand that, all this stuff is a lot of figuring out. I click around all the time and just figure it the fuck out. I'm not kidding. <laughs> um, so, but here's, here's one way to do it. Let's say, um, Let's talk about this real quick. During the onboarding process, okay? During the onboarding process, what we do with the client is we, we, go, we set them up on a GoToMeeting or join.me or whatever screen share that you guys wanna use, and we walk them through this process because this is, if you think this is confusing for you, it's way over their head, okay? So what you need to do is have them log into their business manager on the screen share and be in their business manager now. So picture this whole dashboard is their business manager. And you're like, great, I need for you to give me access, admin access to your page, agency access. Great, I need for you to, to, um, to either give me access to your ad account or just say, I'm gonna create a new one for you. Don't worry about that, right? Depending on the scenario. So we just covered those in detail. Should be clear on those so far. But let's say that this is, um, that's probably not a great example, but let's just say, I'll just create a dummy page, how about that? So we can talk about the actual page. Um, Rob's Bakery. Uh, whatever. Um, Okay, cool. So now this is what it's gonna look like, all right? So the thing that you have to do, the thing that you always do, is you need access to this page, their business page, right? So here's my dummy page, and um, what you wanna do on the screen share is say, okay, great, Mr. Business Owner, now I need admin access to your page, and you're gonna give me permission-based access. This means you still own the, the, um, your page, you have ownership over that asset, but you're assigning user-based permissions to us so that you know, you always own it, you're just giving us temporary access to work on it with you. And they go, oh, okay, great, that sounds good. And you just say, this is how Facebook wants us to do it. This is staying within their terms of service. Then you click assign, then you say, now what I need for you to do is go to the page, 
under People and Assets, go to Pages, and click on Assign Partner on your business page. So they go, okay. And then you're gonna select a role and say, now select Page Admin, right? And now, oh, this is new. Um, so I guess you can copy this link. So then what you would say is copy this link and um, email that to me, right? Or type it in the chat box, right? Because I'm gonna click on that link and it's gonna give my agency page access. Our agency page is called Page Ladder, okay? So, um, so let me think about that for a second. Okay, good, yes. So you either need this link, and it looks like they're trying to make this process easier, um, or you can connect your page using your partner's business ID instead. Okay, now this is the way that I've done it, so let's click on there. This is the way that I've done it. I rattle off our, our um, business manager ID, okay? Now, there's a couple different ways to find the business manager ID, but the easiest way is when you're logged into your business manager, um, it's gonna be this super long string of digits, okay? So let me just cancel this real quick and go back to like the first page. It's this huge number right here, 1080225044, whatever, right? That's my business manager's ID. It will connect their, um, it, it will give us user-based permission access to just my business manager using this ID, okay? So let's go back there. I think I copied and pasted it. But the, so you wanna grab this, and when they're giving you access, you're just saying, page hey, admin, um, Boom, right? Business ID and click connect. <clears throat> so this isn't didn't work because I'm I, I'm trying to give myself access. <laughs> but when your client does that, you can literally open a new window on your computer and open up your business manager and there will be a little globe notification in the top right corner right here that says the bakery just gave you page admin access. Okay, and then when you you say great. So then you go to your pages and the bakery's page is gonna have admin access down here now, okay? So in your agency's business manager, that page will show up here. Then you wanna do what, what, uh, what we just did before and add people to that page. So if you or, or your employees need to work that account, you need to add the people to that account. And so I'd need to give Betsy page admin access to that client's page, okay? Got it? Everybody clear on that so far? Cool stuff. Good, good, good. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. All right, so, so that's how I do it on the onboarding call. Now, if you're creating a fresh ad account for them, you're done. You don't have to go past the page part, right? They gave your business manager access. You assign yourself and any employees to that account, so now you can work on it, and you're done. If you want to get the same level of access from their ad account, then you just need to repeat, rinse and repeat that process in this in this area right here, okay? Um, they need to go to the ad account, click Assign Partner, right? Same thing, just do that again. And then when you log back into your, your business manager, you're under ad accounts, you're gonna see the bakery's ad account here, okay? The client's ad account. Cool beans. If you are you are creating a fresh ad account, you would just go here and click Add New Ad Account and create one for the client. Just click Create Add New Ad Account right here. Okay. Good shit. <clears throat> um. Okay, there's a ton of questions. <laughs> Steve Oaks says Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Chorus playing in the background from this training, sinking into my head. Good man. I know I'm moving slow, guys, but this is so necessary, right? This is the best way to do it. The way that I just showed you, getting the client on, like don't don't email them about this. It's terrible. They need help getting through this as fast as possible. This, if they already have everything they need and they get on here and you're doing the screen share, this might take five or 10 minutes. It can be a nightmare, hours and hours, days and days, if you do it virtually or whatever, you know, do it by email or do it on phone without screen share, okay? So Chad Bruce has a good question. You added Betsy, you are automatically added as an admin. Um, I was, yes, um, Chet, because, did you see that step here? Um, sign partner. 
I, you're instructing the client to select the role that you're giving me. So if they give me um, admin access and then they send that over, I will automatically have admin access, I think. Or if not, it'll give me the ability to bump myself up to admin right away, right here, right? So you could just click on that little guy and it'll give, so page moderator is maybe the default role that it comes with, but they gave me the ability to go all the way up to page admin, so you would just change that right there. Good stuff. Um, Kevin says, what do you use for screen share? I use GoToMeeting or join.me is another good one. Join.me, that one's fast, that one's great. There's also Zoom. Any of these will do. I don't endorse anyone more than the other, so it comes down to probably budget for you and features. Zoom and join.me are probably the two most popular right now. <clears throat> what is the difference between admin and agency, Steve says. Um, agency access is just what makes sense to the client. So I use that word, but they're, in this context, Steve, they're the same thing. So when you ask for admin access to a business owner, to a business owner an admin is usually like, like a secretary to them. So they're like, what? Admin access? What does that mean? So I just like saying agency access, meaning we're an agency and we're positioning ourselves as such. And Facebook, when you work with an agency, Facebook wants you to use business manager. So I just use the word agency. But admin is the highest level of permissions that they're giving you. So that's all. It's just verbiage. Uh, Vita says we create a new ad account from their account once they give me admin access. And this would be my account for a free trial that they don't have access to? No, incorrect. You create a new ad account from your business manager, Vita. Okay? You don't create one in their business manager. You create one in your business manager that you own control and you just name it your client's name and they don't have access to it. Does that make sense? MACD has a good question. If it's a coal prospect, how do you convince them to give you 200 bucks? Um, it's part of the deal, bro. Uh, in the prospecting and sales, we're, that's how we set it all up. Is we're doing we're going super nice and doing the ads and the funnel for free. It's normally thousand bucks, twenty five hundred bucks. We're doing that for free for a week. We're setting all that up for free. All they have to do is kick in two hundred dollars to fuel the car, right? So with the right prospect, if they're well qualified and they get it, and you know they look at your stuff and they understand the power of it, then 200 bucks is nothing, right? They spend a thousand, five thousand dollars on direct mail. It doesn't do crap for them all the time. Small businesses do that all the time. They spend a thousand dollars and up for a, a shitty yellow pages ad that does nothing for them all the time. <laughs> you know, they do Val Pack, which doesn't do much for them either. That's like 250, 500 bucks a month all the time. Make sense? Uh. Chad. <laughs> okay, cool. Vita says she gets it. If it's a cold prospect, how do you convince them to give you 200? Oh, sorry, that was a repeat of Mac, uh, Mac D's. Uh, um, Joe says after their trial, you don't use their CC for future ad spends. Um, so, Joe, just go into the payment, payment module, the video in there. Um, I set them up on a monthly recurring thing. So after the trial, I call them again and say, okay, I'm getting your credit card now, but now it's monthly recurring. So we're going to charge you the same day every month, the same amount. So I'm going to charge you $1,000 service fee plus $500 ad spend. And I'm just going to put that into Sam cart or pay funnels. And, um, and every month on the same day, it's going to come out. So check this one out right here, how to collect payment the easy way. Cool. Um, Okay. Okay, guys. So let's let's look at Shane's message. I think we're wrapping our heads around this. Let me know if you have other questions that I haven't answered yet. There's a lot of them in here, so I'm, I'm cherry picking the ones that I think are the best. Okay. Um, so Shane's message says, um, "Here, I'm going to copy and paste this. Um, let's just do this on like slides. No, docs."
Okay. Um, and thank you, Shane, for uh, for sharing this with the community. Okay. Here's the message. I'm running an agency and I need an additional ad accounts in my business manager so that I can service several clients. Thanks in advance for your help. Hi Shane, thank you for reaching out to Facebook ad support. My name is Lizette. I understand that you need to increase. More than happy to increase it. Currently you've reached the limit of accounts. To enable more, I need some additional information from you. Business name, business address, business manager ID, website, URL. Once I have this information, you should be able to create new accounts in your business manager within 48 hours. Okay, guys, this is the answer to the test, all right? I knew this before, but I didn't know that this is how they're doing it now, okay? The, the reason why they want for you guys to only have two ad accounts, for everybody to have two ad accounts at the get-go is because there's a lot of stupid spammers out there who are, you know, routinely violating Facebook's terms of service and getting shut down. So they don't want those spammers to have a thousand ad accounts because it's just a lot harder for them to stay on top of. Um, I knew that before, but this makes sense now. Shane's um, response email, it says, we want to make sure that you are, um, it, it's all about validity. So we want to make sure that you're a valid business slash person, right? You're not a spammer. So legitimate businesses have a business name. Legitimate businesses have a business address. Um, legitimate businesses take the time to know where their business manager ID is. <laughs> legitimate businesses have website URLs, okay? So they're looking for legitimacy. Does that make sense, guys? So, excuse me, I just had to get a drink. Um, if you proactively submit this stuff, th they're probably going to get a response that says, great, we'll have it turned on tomorrow or the next day. I'm guessing, okay? So, Two things here. If you don't have a business name, don't freak out. Just say Rob Bailey Marketing, Rob Bailey Ads, okay? Um, just, just use that. I have page ladder, but I could have just easily said Rob Consulting or Rob, Rob Bailey Advertising, right? Business address. If you have an office, great. If you don't, put your home address or an address that you don't mind you know, submitting to them. Um, business manager ID. I showed you guys how to get that, right? It's uh, up here in the top bar right there, super easy to find. And then the website URL. Again, they're looking for, for, for legitimacy, legitimacy, legitimacy. Make a simple page, guys. If you do not have this yet, just go fire something up that's basic. You guys, have you seen my site? This is like stupid basic, right? I have a Facebook disclaimer, right? Because I run ads to my, my site sometimes. So Facebook is probably looking for this when they someone manually re reviews my site. I have a terms page, right? This is basic stuff, but just legitimate businesses have privacy things on here. And you guys can rip what I have on my site exactly. Just change it to me your business, obviously. But th this, these are basic things that legitimate businesses take the time to do, right? I have a support link, right? Here's my email address on my site. <laughs> Super transparent. I'm a real dude, right? Uh, contact. I've got my address here, right? And again, this is like a virtual mailbox. It doesn't have to be an office if you don't have an office. Um, privacy. Again, this is a boilerplate privacy thing, okay? So, guys, they don't care what's on your homepage. They just want to see. I mean, this probably helps. They see I'm a real guy and all that stuff. But all this stuff down here is what they're looking at, right? If they check out your website. So get a simple one-page site up. It doesn't have to be fancy. Just get the information on there, right? Um, if it if it looks like an agency, even better. But that's what I would do, okay? It's just again, just to proactively get approval on this on the first try. That's what I would do, okay? So now let's go to Shane's next one. His reply is. Um, Oh, wait, how do I, oh, slide, duplicate, okay. So Shane's um, reply is, here's the information you requested. If you need anything else, please let me know. I would drop my phone number here too, for sure, just to be like, 
oh, you can hit me on my cell. You know, they're, they're not going to call you, probably. <laughs> but what you're trying to do is just show, again, show legitimacy. So I would even drop my Facebook profile URL and just be like, I'm a real dude. It says it in my profile who I help, right? Good stuff. Okay, so then Shane's, hi, Lizette. Um, Oh, she did. She left the voicemail. Okay, so I'm just snagging these from the comments, guys, so bear with me. Um, <clears throat> is this good stuff, guys? Are we getting to the bottom of all this for you, for you all? And I appreciate the contributions. I know this is uh, not the funnest topic, but this is a necessary evil. So, um, okay, good. So, hi, Lizette. Just checking back with you because I need, but I still not re receiving a notification. Oh, this is bomb. Okay, so guys, kill him with kindness. Would it be too much to ask you to follow up on this and try to expedite it for me? I thought this was only supposed to take one or two days because that's what she told him. Thanks in advance. Oh, so money. Instead of being all salty and being like, where the F are my ad accounts? You know, Shane is doing this the right way. You know, you get more bees with honey, right? Uh, hi, Shane. Just left a voicemail. I want to let you know the ad account limit was updated for you so you can now create additional ad accounts. Process delayed a bit only because the business manager name is in Shane Hall and the business info you gave me was for Alpha Dog Digital. So they were a bit wary due to the difference. You guys see what that, that is right there? This is gold. Oh my gosh. So you want, again, they are looking for legitimacy. You want to make this as easy as possible for them to understand that, that you are a real business operating real accounts for real clients, okay? Once I clarified that is your name, they completed the request for me, okay? So guys, this is good. Up here, clarify that for them. First try, first email, right? Just make it easy for them. A little extra effort is probably going to go a long way. Um, <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, okay, good. I think that was it. It, was that your last one, Shane? Sorry, there's a ton of questions in here. Shane, if you could just type one or yes. Yep, that was the last one. Okay, good. Great, guys. So, Shane, would you just type yes, it's okay if you if this is okay to um, to post in the membership site in the group to help other people? Okay, thank you, buddy. So, guys, I'm just going to save this. I'll clean it up and, and post it in the membership site. And here's where I'll put it, okay? With this video replay, I will put it. I'll write the text in there. Um in the next video, it'll be right below here. So if you hit the membership page, go to module eight bonuses, four part live training replays. I'm going to put the video right here and below that I'll put the text file so you guys can just read those or whatever you want to do with them. Okay. Um, yeah, guys, thanks Shane. Big time. Greg says, thank you, Shane. Uh, Frank says, what is the email address of Lizette? Um, and I don't know if that would speed it up or not, but here's a, a good thing to go over real quick guys is, um, this, this I believe, Shane, and tell me if I'm incorrect, but from business manager, this is where you submitted that message is you click help and this little flyout comes out and then you click contact us, right? And so here's the deal is I have this email button, but I've heard from other people that this may or may not show up on yours inside of your business manager. So Shane, did you see this email button right here? Yes. Okay. Frank Kona says doesn't work. Frank, did you write it just like did you <laughs> do it as well as, as Shane is showing? And I'm not crit critiquing you because I would have fucked it up the first time too, but I'm just saying there's I completely with hundred percent clarity now know what they're after and if um if you submit it in that fashion and it's super clear who you have and you have everything that they need, it should work, right? And then you just keep Keep following up. Keep killing with kindness. Okay, cool. Shane says that's where he did it. Okay. So, um, guys, look for this email. And another thing that I've heard is that this email button will be up during certain hours of the day. I don't know if that's true or not because I don't check it a lot. But Betsy sees this email button all the time. So do I. If you log in at like midnight tonight, I don't know. It could be off at night and on during the day or something, right? Um, cool. Cool. <clears throat> okay, some of you, Ed McDonald says, mine 
says just ask community no email button um, Harry says I'm in Ohio and it isn't showing the email isn't there for most peeps is what Frank says shoot so maybe I don't know Shane if you have the contact of an email for Lizette maybe that's an okay way to approach her um, I don't know where else we would do it I looked into that last time and I could not find another way to do it um, maybe 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 here's an idea support inbox No messages yet. Let's see. Hmm. How do we submit a support gripe in the first place? Ah, okay. Maybe this one. Reporter problem. You guys see where I am down here in the bottom right? Reporter problem. Ah. Uh, General feedback. I would go with something isn't working. Has anyone tried this? Something isn't working. Click here. Let's see. Uh, <clears throat> you know what I would do is click on. Gosh, this is pretty annoying. Um, I would do other. And I would I would copy and paste um, Shane's exact email into there with all the stuff that you have. Yeah, okay, so David Main says, I had to report a problem. So maybe this is how you get in if you don't have the, um, the email, okay? All right, Shane's saying the emails from Lizette were generated with a case number. I don't know if that worked that would work for anyone else. It might not. I don't know. You know what? Um, guys, ask, ask Shane about that in the group, and if we can figure that out collectively, and it's not going to get him in hot water with Facebook, <laughs> we'll try to figure that out. But that one sounds like it needs a little bit of figuring out, okay? Uh, Tony's asking, do you think it's possible to get an FB contact for the group? I don't think so, man. Uh, Frank says, yeah, I did report a problem. I'm still waiting on the reply. Keep you posted. Okay, good. So, guys, try try doing this, too. Try doing this exact sequence, um, but try to deliver everything to them on a silver platter on the first try, okay? So instead of just saying this, I would answer everything that she talked about wanting to get this done in that first email, right? And just hand it to them on a silver platter and tell them, I've tried everything else. Please point me in the right direction if this is not the right place, right? Good stuff. Um, okay, Shane says it sort of looks like this. Okay, do you, do you mind if I share that here, Shane? And I don't know. They could try it, I guess. Is it going to mess up? I don't see any reason why it would hurt you, but I don't want to cause more, more problems. Um, he said sure, so... Oh, yeah, he said that's not the real one. So this is what her email address looked like. So Jane X'd out these X's, but this is what the <laughs> case number, blah, 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 75. It's Facebook, support.facebook.com. So, yeah, guys, I don't know. It's so frustrating. I know it, and I feel your pain, but I don't know what else to do, honestly. So I think the key here is to keep keep sharing what's working and write it, you know, like keep the topic hot until <laughs> we can collectively figure it out. But like I said, guys, I got in before this got so hard, so it's tough for me to offer any um, real actionable advice besides test, 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 try, 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 right? Okay, and Shane's being super cool, guys. Thank him a bunch. He's saying he's going to ask Lizette what's the best way to get this done and he's gonna post it in the group for us so clap it up for him really appreciate really appreciate that Shane okay so Ed hopefully we answered your question guys any other questions it looks like I answered them all but I don't wanna um, there's a ton in here so I tried to collect the ones that 
the biggest rocks, if you will, and tackle those. So if you guys have um, other questions lingering, let me know. But I think this is a good, good progress report for a lot of you, right? Um, clap, 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 Tony says. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Uh, Vita says, thanks so much, Shane. Awesome. Steve says, would you suggest sending this info with your request to speed it up? Yeah, totally. So send them the info on the first try, right? So don't just say I'm running an agency and I'm going to let you dig around for my info. Say, I've heard from another agency owner that you need my business name, business address, business manager ID, website URL. So here they are, right? Also, here's my best contact phone number. Also, here's my best contact email. Also, here's my personal Facebook page, right? They're going to be like, well, shit, this guy seems real already. <laughs> he just delivered it to us on a silver platter, right? So, yes, make that first email as effective as you possibly can, and I would think that would speed it up. Greg Stillman says, in a long-term relationship, do you always invoice slash collect ad spend, or do you move to a CC on file? You could do it either way, but I just, I just, um, I, I keep a credit card on file, so to speak, but I don't collect their, I don't keep it physically on file. I sign up, I sign them up on a recurring payment profile using, uh, guys, for the payment stuff, go go to the sales, how to collect the payment the easy way. You'll see. We create a recurring payment through PayFunnels or PayPal or um I also have used um, SamCart with Stripe, right? And th with those, you create a recurring profile one time, and then it's automated after that. It takes care of it all. Cool. Uh, Joe says, how many campaigns do you run for free? A martial arts school will have kickboxing, martial arts boot camp. We do one offer, one funnel, one offer, one ad for free, Joe. And start with their bestseller. If they offer all kinds of stuff, start with their bestseller. Chet says, you never keep the CC info on file, PCI compliance problems. That's right, Chet. So th the good thing about using a payment processor like this is it saves you a ton of time, and you don't store their credit card info on file. They, th The um, credit card processor itself that you use, you can use any of these three that I've had experience with, and they will they, they themselves are PCI compliant, therefore you are PCI compliant. Right, so you're going to avoid any legal issues or security or, you know, issues like that, if you're going to use a service like that. Versus having their credit card information on your desk <laughs> for the cleaning lady at night to see or whoever. Um, Joe says for your fee, a thousand dollars a month gets them how many campaigns? Just one. One campaign, dude. What's? Some martial arts schools have multiple classes. Well, we don't want to promote all of their classes. We want to promote one offer that gets them into the most popular class. Does that make sense? So uh, what's their best selling class or their most popular class, Joe? Um, <clears throat> Kevin McCarty says, how do you get the owner's contact info for cold email prospecting? Um, Kevin, there's tools out there that help you do that, but you can also look it up on their site. Um, you can also, like on Groupon, sometimes you can find it. It just depends, but um, there's tools that you can use online. Just Google how to um, find anybody's email address, and there's like literally tons of ways, tons of tools, tons of ways. Um, yeah, most just have general emails like contact at business.com. But there's, I literally, if you do a little bit of light research in Google, um, there's a ton. Go to the HubSpot sales blog, too. Look at this. Um, B2B salespeople are like ninjas at this shit. So <laughs> HubSpot is a B2B sales and marketing software. But um, there's a ton of posts like that in here. Uh, let me see if I can quickly search. Um, see how this little search thing? Uh, find anyone's email address. Three quick ways to find anyone's email address. 
how do you use social media to find an email address? 10 essential, oh, that's not really it, but um, yeah, there's a ton of articles like that in here, and you'll start to find really fast, like, um, you know, try this, right? Uh, export LinkedIn connections. So if you're connected with them in LinkedIn, you can get their email address. I don't know if you guys know that, but that's a good one. Um, there's another, yeah, so email breaker, right? So there's a bunch of different ways you can do it, um, but B2B, I used to be heavy into the B2B space. We used to be a HubSpot reseller, and these guys are awesome at it. Like, if you've ever gotten emailed for, like, a business service, you're like, how the F did that guy find out so much about me? These guys are freaking scary good, right? So check that out. Let me know if you still have questions, but that's that's the biggest one. Um, Greg Simmons said, find emails, grow hack. Okay, let me see if I can paste that. So we'll just talk about a quick resource to dig into. How to get anyone's email address in 2016. Good stuff. Right? So check that one out. Just Google it. It's on growhack.com. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of little apps that you can use that are free and paid. Uh, so Joe says, depending on the town, kickboxing is for women. Krav Maga is for men. Um, some kids' martial arts programs are popular. Um, okay, cool. So if they want to run all three, then just charge them. You know, be like, well, it sounds like you want to do this, so why, why wait? <laughs> but that's three times the work, three campaigns you need to manage, three offers you have to figure out. It's three times the work for you, three times the benefit for them. Right? So I can tell you right now from my experience, kickboxing for women is the one that I always start with because it's the easiest to sell. Remember, women are way more responsive to Facebook ads than men are in general, especially in fitness. So I would start, if you're going to choose one, say, well, let's start with kickboxing for women. We'll make one offer for them, and we'll test that, and then you can expand if you want to uh, get fancy. But, you know, women are going to get in there, and, and I would call it fitness boxing too. Because that's what they're not there to get punched in the face. They're there to get fit and have some fun, getting some angst, angst out, right? <laughs> Good stuff. All right. Cool. Anything else, guys? I think I answered most of the questions. Anything looming before we'll call it a day? This is a long one, but I think it was worth the wait, worth the time. Uh, I'm just gonna name this. So I'll handle any last last minute questions while I name this. This was. Um, Shane Hall Business Network. Sweet. Vita says, super good training today. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Uh, Max says he's writing questions. And guys, you can always ask questions in the group, too. I'm not, um, it's not just confined to this. So, Ed says, thanks, Rob. Great info. Thank you, Ed. Um, Kevin says, thanks. You got it. Greg says, good stuff, thanks. You're welcome, brother. Um, Tony says, I get clients to bank transfer it to my account. That's not reversible. Yep, that's another way to get the money. Just get the money, right? Uh, Eric says, thanks. Thank you, Eric. And I think everything recorded today, but um, I appreciate you backing me up, buddy. Uh, Lou Ward says, recording, question mark, missed first half of training. Yes, Lou. It will be posted in the members area after we get it up. Should be later today if everything goes okay. When running the free trial, are you both running desktop and mobile? Yes, Mac, I test them both. Uh, just go to the campaign build section and we show you the way that we split it out. Uh, appreciate the training, Sam Weir says. I appreciate you, Sam. My pleasure. Any advice for running campaigns over the holidays? Do you go full bore or lay off a bit, Wayne says. Um, I always run ads over the holidays because my everybody likes to take a break during the holidays. But guys, think about it. People have time off during the holidays. So if you're running ads for a gym, might opt in for the gym. Might not come in right away, but they're sitting on the couch or doing whatever, like spending time with family, yeah, but they're on their phones and they're on the internet, trust me. Um, or they're waiting at the airport or whatever. I mean, the people that they're not at work, I think, gives you an advantage, you know? Um, a lot of people take breaks, you know, during the holidays, so I like to keep the stuff running. You're gonna get some business from it, at least, so. 
Uh, Alan says, great training, Rob. Thank you, sir. Um, same time, yep, same time, same place tomorrow, Chet. We'll see you then. And where do you get your ads to run the campaigns, Mac says. Mac, have you gone through the training, bud? <laughs> oh, the images. The images, I get them from the client's website, dude. We talked about that a little bit yesterday in yesterday's live training, which is in the replays, in the membership area. Um, so go check that. But yeah, we get them from the client's website, man. They usually always have it, especially in fitness. Ed says, see you tomorrow. See you, Ed. Cheers. Jamil says, thanks, Rob. Awesome training. You got it, brother. Frank says, awesome stuff, Rob. Thank you. You're welcome, Frank. Max says, yep. Okay, good. So, gotcha. Dialed in there. I think Mac. But, dude, all this stuff is in there. You just got to go through it. And the trainings are quick, guys. There's some trainings in there that are 10 minutes, 20 minutes. So, it's not like an hour each video. So, go through them. Um... Mike Holmes says, thanks again. Appreciate it. You got it, brother. Uh, what's a quick and good option for an affordable website, Jermaine? Uh, Jermaine, oh, gosh. You know, there's like these about.me sites. Um, I think it might be free, dude. This might be a free one. Like, you can't customize it a lot, but if you just need something up, you know, um, like I think I did about me slash Rob. Uh, I don't know. Let's see, dude. Let me see if I can log in. Jamil says about.me is great for SEO as well. Yeah, it could be, dude. I think I signed up for one of these and never did anything with it, but check that out. So, yeah, try that. I think it's free. Branded.me is a bit more robust. Okay, so branded.me. Thank you for that, Greg Stillman. Same kind of concept though, right? So it'll help you create a nice little page with not much effort, and you can just slap some some privacy stuff on there or something, right? Uh, cool. Roger says, glad. Thanks, glad you have a replay. Just came back in. Yep, Roger, we're going to have this up in the members area shortly for you, bud. Um, okay, what do the course is okay. So Wayne Walter says I went through the, the course once. Is this way of managing the accounts different than what's in the course? Uh, Wayne, no, I just slowed it down and really detailed it, like explained each scenario and step in detail today. So if you're still on, buddy, that was like an hour ago. I think I missed that one, but. Um, does the client need to have their biz profile page and photos completed before I can get agency access? Yes, they do, <clears throat> Jermaine. Yes to that one. Okay, guys. Uh, I think that we're good. I'll go ahead and sign off. Any other questions, we'll um, see you in the group. And have a good day, y'all. Later.